You're about to learn the very first thing you should do with acoustic treatment in your listening room or mixing studio. It could mean the difference between this and this. In the process of optimizing the acoustics of a room for sound quality, one of the biggest problems will be the first reflections. When sound comes out of your speakers, some of the energy goes directly from the speakers to your ears as direct sound, but a lot of energy reflects off of walls, ceilings, and other surfaces, and then reaches your ears as indirect sound. This proposes a big problem because the indirect sounds travel a further distance and therefore reach your ears slightly later than the direct sounds, and this results in phase interference. Let me show you what I mean by this. Here, we have sound wave number one on top, sound wave number two in the middle, and the bottom wave represents what happens when these two waves are mixed together. When the two waves are aligned in time, they sum together to create a stronger wave. This is called constructive interference. But look what happens when we shift these waveforms so that they're no longer aligned in time. At a certain point, depending on the wavelength, the two waves will completely cancel each other out. This is called destructive interference. And the two waves will partially cancel out or partially sum together at any time offset between these two extremes. The same thing happens when the indirect sound reflects off of a wall and interferes with the direct sound at the listening position. However, unlike our demonstration, your music is made up of many frequencies. While a single frequency might look like this, the combination of all of the frequencies in your music will look more like this. Higher frequencies have shorter wavelengths and lower frequencies have longer wavelengths. That means that the same time offset that results in a complete cancellation at one frequency could result in a partial cancellation at another frequency and a complete summation at another. So when you mix two copies of your music together at a slight delay, it results in big cancellations, big summations, and everything in between. And that's exactly what's happening when indirect sound interferes with direct sound. The first reflections or early reflections are particularly problematic for two reasons. One, the first reflections are the shortest indirect pathway from your speakers to your ears, which means they don't have much space to lose energy before reaching the listening position. Two, the first reflections only reflect off of one surface, which means that the balance of energy across the frequency spectrum is still very similar to the direct sound. Said simply, the early reflections result in a lot more interference compared to the later reflections, which have already interacted with several surfaces and have already lost a lot of energy. Luckily, we can mitigate the impact of this interference if we decrease the level of the indirect sound in relation to the direct sound. This already happens to some degree due to the fact that energy is lost over distance, but in most studios, the distance traveled by an early reflection isn't very far. We need to use acoustic treatment to reduce the level of the indirect sound even more. Acoustic treatment can be expensive, so if you're working with a limited budget, I'd recommend building your own acoustic panels. You can download a free acoustic panel blueprint at audiouniversityonline.com slash acoustic panel blueprint. This will give you a step-by-step -step process to build your own panels at a fraction of the cost. If you want pre-made acoustic panels, you'll also find a link below to the panels that I'd recommend. Alternatively, you could use things that you already have lying around your house, such as curtains or blankets. Just keep in mind that the effectiveness of an acoustic absorber is dependent on its thickness. For this reason, I'd recommend using panels that are at least four inches thick. Otherwise, you'll absorb a lot of high frequencies without doing much in the low mid and low frequencies. Once you've got your acoustic absorption panels, how do you know where to place them in order to treat the early reflections? Here's a simple trick. One, sit in the listening position. Two, have a friend slide a mirror along the side wall until you can see the left speaker. Then keep sliding the mirror and mark where you can see the right speaker. These are the places where you should place acoustic panels, because these are the surfaces where the early reflections will bounce off of. But there are still a few more reflections we should consider treating. Hanging panels from the ceiling is also effective. These are often referred to as ceiling clouds. The mirror trick is a bit more difficult here, but the same principle applies. 
Place acoustic absorption where the sound bounces off of the ceiling and back toward the listening position. There's also potential for sound to bounce off of the front wall and the rear wall, but the directivity of most speakers and the distance between the listening position and the rear wall often make these reflections much less severe. So you may see a larger improvement by using acoustic treatment elsewhere, but this really does depend on your speakers and your room. In a mixing studio, the desk can be a big problem when it comes to reflections. Ideally, you would have no desk or as small a desk as possible. However, you'll notice that my desk presents potential for a very strong reflection, and the decision to have this desk just comes down to priorities. I use my desk often, so it's worth sacrificing sound quality for more working space, in my opinion. There are some techniques that can be used to mitigate this problem. One example would be to move your speakers back so that the angle of the reflection increases to the point where the reflected sound no longer reaches the listening position. But I've found that, especially for smaller rooms, this solution has implications on the room layout that are impractical in the best cases and counterproductive in the worst cases. The best solution really is to reduce the size of your desk to eliminate the potential for reflected sound altogether. Here's a before and after example in my room. Listen for the comb filtering that occurs when the acoustic panels are removed. Don't forget to download the acoustic panel blueprint with the link below. In the next video, you'll learn about another room acoustics problem that has a big impact on sound quality, especially in the low frequencies. I'll see you there.